Hi, this is David Williams from Okanagan College, and today I want to talk to you about product of sums expressions, as well as converting truth tables to product of sums expressions. Now, to give you a little bit of motivation on, on why we would need two different forms, two different standard forms, as hopefully you've already seen the sum of products expression uh, form, and, and now we've got a new form, product of sums expression. So before I show you what the POS form looks like, product of sums form looks like, let's take a, let's take a look at a truth table here. So let's say we've got three input signals, S, T, and U, and then we've got an output signal, V. And we're going to look at, in this truth table, all of the possible combinations of inputs. So we've got, oops, we've got eight different input combinations, and for each one of those input combinations, we're going to have either a one or a zero at the output. And for this particular circuit, we're going to have most of the outputs equal to zero, equal to one, except for the one where s is one, t is zero, and u is zero, where the output is equal to zero. Now, if we're doing the product of if we're doing the sum of products expressions, like what, like um, hopefully you've seen before, what we do is we look at all of the rows where the output is a one, and then we create the product expression for that particular row. So for this row, we've got not s, not t, not u. For this row, we've got not s, not t, u. For this row, we've got not s and t and not u. And for this row, not s, t, and u. This row, s, not t, and u. And, oops. We got s, t, not u, and then s, t, u. So that was a, the first step for the creating the sum of products expression. And then what we do is we, we take all of these product forms and we add the and we add them together. In other words, we OR them together. So we're going to end up with an OR expression where V is equal to, there's going to be seven expressions OR together. I'm not going to write them all out because you, you can see them all there. But there's going to be seven of them OR together. So this is a pretty large Boolean algebra expression to represent this truth table. So wouldn't it be easier if we could somehow just deal with this particular row where the output's a zero? There's only one row where the output's a zero, so wouldn't it be easier to deal with that? And the answer is yes, it, it is, and we can use the product of sums expression to do that. To just give you a quick idea of what POS form looks like, and then we'll go back to, to figuring out what the POS form is for this expression. Product of sums, so like you can imagine if, if you uh, think about the the terminology in the word here, product of sums, so what we're going to have is um, go away. Okay, sorry about that. So we got y uh, just as as an example, not not anything related to, to this truth table. We've got y is equal to x or w or z. So there's my sum expression and then we've got a product of all of, of a bunch of sum expressions or some number of sum expressions x or not w or not z would be a would be a product of sum expression we've got sums two sums and we multiply them together to be the product product of sums expression so how are we go about creating product of sums expression from this particular truth table and we'll see that it's much simpler form and then you can imagine that we only since we only have one row where the outputs a zero there's only going to be one term in this expression and in general for any truth table you can create a sum of products expression or a product of sum expression and since they're both representing the same truth table they're going to be equivalent to each other and you can use a theorem of boolean algebra called de morgan's theorem to prove that and uh, we, We'll come to that later in later on in, in, in these tutorials and, and show how you can use De Morgan's theorem to prove that the two are, are, are equivalent. So the steps for converting 
this truth table and a product of sums expression is is first of all number one identify the rows where the outputs are zero so we've done that there we identify the row where the outputs are zero it's just this particular row now we want to look at all of the input variables for that particular row and what value those input variables have <clears throat> and if an input variable has the value of a one for that row then we take the inverse of that variable is going to be part of our sum expression and so we can look at all three of these variables the s is a one so we're going to get not s the t is a zero so if we have if it's a zero in the in the row if the variable is a zero in the row then we just use the variable as is in its true form not the inverted form and it's, so the t is in a zero and the u is a zero so that is our sum expression or or expression for that row so that mean there's only the one row so we don't have to do anything else v is going to be equal to not s or t or u so that form is a lot simpler than the form where we were going to have to have seven product expressions in the same boolean algebra expression Now I'm going to end part one here and come back with part two of the POS tutorials and I will do another example and show you an example where I come up with a POS and the SOP form and, and show you that they are equivalent to each other.